Hey, how about them tops, son? All day, SEC boys. You're listening to the Red Out Podcast. Welcome in to another Red Out Podcast. I am the ever spotty yet returned Jake. Yes, and Devin in the house. And sadly, this week I have to report that. Ross will not be joining us. He was injured in a diaper accident. Um, he went to change his child's diaper. The entire thing of diapers fell on top of him, pinning him. Uh, the EMTs did get him out. And uh, Jared is not going to join us either because he was eaten by a bear uh, in the Great Smoky Mountains. And uh, luckily, we did get Leroy on who saved Jared. So we're, we're, we're winning on one aspect, right? So... Uh, kidding completely. Leroy's a great writer. Writes for the Tower Rack. Uh, does a great job. Uh, like, share, and subscribe, guys. Uh, we appreciate y'all listening every week. And thanks, Laura. Had a nice conversation with you this afternoon. Uh, so, just go ahead and jump on into it. Winners and losers. My first loser I'll throw out. Jared will love this. Uh, the Dolphins. Just because. So bad. Just because. Got so bad. <laughs> yeah. So, on the... Just talking about that, right? So, uh, the week before last, I had to go to a friend's wedding in Sterling, Virginia. That's awesome. Now, you know what? A wedding was awesome, and the time of hanging out was great. The 12 hours that it takes to drive there, freaking nightmare. Yeah, oh there is God. no easy way to get to Virginia. I'd... No, and here's the deal. Yeah, flying. That's about it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but it, I was sitting there on the Dolphins. I was sitting there uh, waiting uh, for the wedding to get going. We're ready and just kind of chilling in the hotel room. Don't have a lot to do. And I was like, I'm gonna, you know what? It's NFL, so I'm going to watch because I'm Sunday. Uh, yeah. I'm going to watch the NFL. And so I was watching the Ravens Dolphins game. And oh my God. <laughs> that is so bad. Like, I know. I know the Ravens have like a much better offensive and defensive line than them, and Lamar Jackson's looking good. But holy crap, the Miami Dolphins! Yes, <laughs> my favorite meme thus far, since you're talking about that, is that these NFL teams that keep playing the Dolphins treat the Dolphins worse than SeaWorld, which yeah, really is my do. favorite meme thus far. <laughs> um, so I, I, I'm gonna I'm I'll, I'll 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 put this one on the back burner just for right now. Uh, there is another winner I've got this week. I just pulled it up. I saw it on Fox News. Chick-fil-A employee hailed as hero. This dude, there's a video online of this guy. He works at Chick-fil-A. Um, I'm not going to attempt his name. Uh, he's a 22-year-old team leader, and his name is Tayu Ngaku. I just said I wasn't going to, and I did it anyway. I know. I, I, if you listen a lot, you know I cannot say names, so it's fine. Uh, he looks like a really nice guy. Uh, he is working in the drive through at Chick-fil-A, looks out the window, sees something amiss, hands his iPad off to another employee, jumps out the drive through window, runs over to a car where a, 22, or a 20-year-old man is having a cardiac arrest on the ground. He starts CPR, tells the friends to call 911, and then instructs them on how to do CPR. After he was done doing that, he gave them all condiments and free Chick-fil-A. The last part I just made up, but the rest of it was completely true. Yeah, he did all that. Uh, he was going. He's wanting to go to nursing school, and he's got pre-nursing classes under his belt. Uh, he's a twenty-year, twenty-two-year-old team leader. So I mean, that's awesome. Dude, so what you're saying is, if I have a heart attack, that means that I get free Chick-fil-A. Yeah, I mean, I would think so. Forever. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I think, yeah. honestly, if you die and go to heaven, you get Chick-fil-A. Because it's Christian chicken. Oh, it's, it's guaranteed. I mean, it's whatever. Um, guaranteed. So, 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 round the receipt. <laughs> so, Jake, do you have any winners or losers? Yeah, uh, mine's a little closer uh, to home on the winner and loser, and it's the same situation. So, if you guys if you guys have ever listened, you know, I went to law school at U of L, so that's kind of a secondary thing that I follow. Uh, sports wise, and uh, today there was an announcement that 
uh, Rick Pitino and the university have settled his $40 million lawsuit. Have either of you guys seen what Rick got? Not a dang thing. That is correct. <laughs> he got Sorry. no money. Yeah, I, he I got just... no money. <laughs> and he got uh, them to change his personnel record to say that he resigned. That, that he was fired. <laughs> that is it? And that's it. That's oh my thing. gosh. So, from like, being a lawyer and like understanding a little bit of the facts of that case, this is very interesting. Because yes. on paper, from a legal argument standpoint, Rick Pitino had an excellent case to go get out of that 40, a couple mil, three, five, seven, something like that. He probably could have settled for it and went on. But the university was willing to go to court with it. And I'm going to steal some of um, an ESPN Louisville uh, uh, host, Bob Balvano. Go Bobby B. He's the man. Uh, his theory, because I think he might be right, in that this is all a set thing for Rick to try to get back into coaching. Because yeah. if he had fought it and won, right, his yeah. name would still be in the news. They'd still be talking about it. Now, you give it a couple of months, a year or two, some... Eastern, like Big East program, East Coast program, is going to give that man another shot. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I mean, and I, I never doubted that Rick would get another job uh, down the road. I mean, it was just a matter of fact of letting the quote unquote storm blow over. Um, yeah. You know, and, and after a while, and loser. yes, Rick Pitino loses because he gets no money, and you don't have to pay any money, so they won. Well, yes and no, Rick lost, but at the same time, he kind of won because now, you know, people can say, well, you know, you were fired at Louisville, and he's like, ah, 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 I wasn't fired, I, I was resigned. resigned. And that's, what, that's the point that Bob Alvano made, uh, because he had a, he said he had a similar situation happen to him where he was fired, not for like, you know, hookers and stuff, but he was fired from a job, and in the, when they began like the settlement because he thought he was wrongly fired so they began the settlement talk and they decided instead of fighting it or really getting gross with it that instead what they would do is they'd say all right we'll give you you know your year salary we're not going to give you the rest of your contract we'll give you a year salary uh, and we'll let it be that you just we'll let you resign instead of firing you so that you resign and get another custom job later but that's something you can sell yep. you can sell hey look they obviously thought this guy as an ad they obviously thought this guy while it wasn't working out, he was on, you know, maybe not necessarily the wrong side of it. He's a winner. Let's give him a shot. And I guarantee you what's going to happen. Complete. And Javel gets to say, hey, we're not punishing a coach that a lot of you guys still like, and we're just moving on, and you don't have to pay $40 million. Completely agree. Uh, do you have any other winners and losers? No, that's all I got this week. Okay. I'm going to steal one that you tweeted about just a little bit ago. The Georgia uh, convenience... I guess grocery store or something that oh, yeah, uh, that pulled awesome. that, awesome. that pulled all the Irish Spring soap off the <laughs> shelf pre Georgia versus Notre Dame. That they're a winner in my book. That was amazing. Amen. Yes, um, I aspire to be that level of petty. That's amazing. Exactly, Leroy. Do you have any winners and losers, buddy? So the losers for the week are the NFL referees, and the reason I say <laughs> that is holding calls are up. 38% from last year, and we're only in week three. Nice. Which, for Commissioner Roger Goodell, who is trying to not necessarily speed up the game, but trying to keep a more smooth flowing and, and keep the refs out of it, he's not doing a very good job at it. Plus, if you saw the last two minutes of the Denver Broncos-Chicago Bears game, that was just a disaster in itself. I am the biggest Bears fan in the world, but there is no way that that is a uh, roughing the passer call at the very end of that game. Of course it was, but yeah. Just it's like uh, just like that targeting call at the end of the Western Louisville game. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> which, That's brings right. me, exactly. which brings me to my, my winner's portion, and that is the, I'm going to go with the Chicago Bears for this one, who have finally found their kicker. If only they could get Mitchell Trubisky actually into the red zone. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, exactly. Good old Trubisky. Yes. Bless his heart. Uh, okay, so full disclosure to all our listeners, I played fantasy football 
well, Jake and I, we've got our own kind of fantasy league we do together, and um, full disclosure, I haven't played in several years, so I was just completely off the grid as far as, you know, who's good and everything. So this past year, I restarted our fantasy league again like I do every year, and I've actually tried to attempt to play, and it is going horrendously. Uh, so far, I've got Dak Prescott, and he's doing pretty good, but I'm not a Cowboys fan, so it's kind of like a, a catch-22, so... Um, if you could do me a favor and draft all of the Green Bay Packers, that would make my life a whole lot easier. <laughs> yeah, I wish. Uh, I actually like Green Bay, and like I was so out of it. I watched Hard Knocks um, and saw that. Uh, oh, what's his name? Gosh, I just went blank. Um, who's on the LA Rams? Clay uh, Clay Matthews. Sorry. Um, yeah, I forgot that he was there. Yes, he's going to LA, and I saw that on Hard Knocks, and I went, "What the." So, yeah, that just shows how good a Green Bay fan I am. Uh, hey, speaking, speaking of uh, NFL not making you terribly sad, the Niners are 2-0, and guys. Oh, my gosh. And, and Garoppolo does not look like garbage. Hey, that's a winner for Jake right there. Oh. He, yeah. 49ers fan over here. Yeah, it was a bad so long. So, um... Uh, another loser, I guess. I guess you all have probably seen the uh, reports that the Titans had a pyrotechnic fire during the game and they had to stop the game. <laughs> I don't know it, what you're talking about. That's a winner. That's yes. That's a winner. By the way, glad nobody got hurt as far as I know. Uh, but that is hilarious as far as I'm concerned. Um, yeah, let's drop Leroy just down just a little bit. Um, so we're going to talk about other sports real quick. Uh, volleyball is on a 10-1 and run so far. They are doing amazing. Uh, and their next uh, seven matches are going to be on the hill. So those of you that are listening and are able to go, go support the Lady Tops. Because as you know by listening to our show, Western is volleyball you. I mean, we just Dude, pump out real. the volleyball girls. Uh, I mean, they are doing amazing. So go support them. Um, soccer has been on a 2-1 and one run. So they're doing good. They're, they lost to Ole Miss. Uh on September 5th and uh, 13th. That was, a really, that was a close game, though. Yeah, and that was double overtime, too. So, yeah, on, on TK. So like, and that was in Bowling Green. So you had yeah. a chance to see an SEC uh, women's soccer team play. Uh, then they played uh, Southern Illinois in 1-3-0, uh, and that was in Bowling Green again. And they played Alabama A&M and won 7-1, which, by the way, for soccer, that's like 72 to nothing. It really is. I, I kept seeing the tweets for that pop up, and it was like every other one was like, and goal, and goal by a freshman. Oh, that's so-and-so's <laughs> first goal. I was like, oh, they're going to mercy rule these people. I'm pretty sure, like, Jason Nadell could have just, like, headed one from the sideline, and it would have went in, too. I'm just saying. Probably. Um, the same percentage of, like, 14. Exactly, yes. Um, but they've got Southern Miss, uh, September 21st. And that's a, that basically, yeah, that's starting conference play. Uh, so go support the Lady Tops. That'll be at 4 p.m. Central, so 5 Eastern, uh, in Bowling Green. And if you want, you can watch it on the HSSN on Facebook. Uh, so Which, how cool is that? That is really awesome now. I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not just glazing over that. That's really awesome that we get to, I mean, you can support the Lady Tops wherever you are. Just sit at home and pull it up on your phone and be like, cool. Uh, so, let's get to the meat of it, I guess, tonight. Western lost to Louisville in Nashville, which, by the way, when they said they were starting Malik Cunningham, I was like, ugh. I yeah, s- I was not... I hate that guy, I'm sorry. I, I, I Since last year, I just loathe him. He's probably a great person, don't get me wrong, but, like, him running all He's over us, him. basically, at the end and stealing the game last year, ugh, makes me sick. Yeah, you don't want to play him. Yeah, I know. You don't want to play against him. Sit in church with him, yeah, but not play against him. Um, <laughs> so, Louisville ended up beating Western 38-21. Uh, the, basically, uh, the second quarter was the biggest determination of losing because Louisville scored three touchdowns and kicked a field goal in the th- second quarter. Um, just yeah, pulling up some, the margin. Yeah, just pulling up some quick stats here. Uh, St- Stephen Duncan was 25 of 47 for 245 yards and three TDs, and he had one fumble, right? That was the scoop and score in the second quarter, I think. Um, poor Gage Walker, he was just limited. I mean, anybody that says the cliche that the game is 
is fought and won in the trenches, meaning that the offensive line and defensive line have a lot to do with it. This game was that game. There was one play that uh, really blew me out of the water, and it was, who was the running back? Hawkins, which, God, I hate that guy too. Um, So... (laughs) Hawkins is running the ball. Sorry, on two two Atwell. I know. Yeah. Oh, don't it. Yeah, it may have been. Good, it was either Hawkins or two two Atwell. They're running down the sideline. Western's, but Western is making the tackle, and there is uh, number sixty for Louisville. I don't remember his name off the top of my head. Uh, he basically picked up our defender and the running back and just packed him past the first down marker and then threw him down. And I was like, Good God, what was that? I mean, it was a sure display of force and I mean it was amazing but it was one of those that I went man this is going to be a long game but uh, so Western had 288 yards most of those were passing Uh, only had 43 rushing yards but we did win one part of the game and that was penalties we were 5 for 25 yards Uh, so I guess there's one positive out of that Um, so Leroy what did you think of the game buddy I really came into this game with very, very little expectations of what to expect. Now, you come off the last couple weeks, and and Western's – Western, I mean, obviously, they're not, you know, losing, losing, but they're they're not really, you know, destroying their their adversaries either. Yes, yes. Plus, you're going into a – plus, you're going into a quote, unquote, home game at at Nissan Stadium because – of course, uh, Louisville Cardinal is too good to uh, come into uh, our home, but uh, yeah. it's one of those things where I really came into this game with little expectations of what to expect and hoping that, just like a movie, that the game would play out a little bit better than than what it did. And uh, you know, unfortunately, we came out on the bottom, but I thought the crowd support was pretty good. Fans went down there. I mean, there was a pretty good crowd that went down there for the for the game, considering and. You know, I, I think I think uh, Helton takes a lot of criticism, uh, but you know, we got to remember this is his second game or third game here, and uh, he's got a lot of work to do, um, especially given injuries and other things like that. Yeah, I, I and, and as you're talking about the injury, um, I think it was apparent if you didn't notice. Uh, Stephen Duncan's limp and his, I mean, he kind of had like a, a off gate if you watched him. Yeah. I think that limited his mobility and going into um, kind of clarifying an uh, argument I had with someone on Facebook, Duncan was limping severely either in the Central Arkansas game or the FIU game. So one or two right there at the beginning of the year. If you noticed, I'm sorry, I'm a strict details person. This guy's walking around limping, and he's got what's called a spat, okay? A spat, whether it's hard, if it's a full or a half. A half is just for looks. It doesn't do really anything. A full spat is basically creating a boot on your foot. So it's going to immobilize your ankle so it can't move. So, we get to Louisville. He's got two. He's limping. He's not running out of the pocket. If he does, he doesn't. He looks like a duck out of water. I mean, he's not doing anything well. So... That is my clarification as to what I saw um, and my uh, diagnosis or of the situation. Uh, yeah, Jake, things were like he's not the, he's, he's not running out of the pocket, and also because you're you're of of that immobility and because of that limited ability, you cannot plant your feet as hard as you can to make those crisp throws. Yes, and I mean. I mean, quarterbacks are tough. Uh, the durability on quarterbacks, we've seen it from day one. Uh, quarterbacks can take a beating, but when you're limited and you're, you know, you're playing a, a, a fairly tough defensive line, it's, it's just going to make things even tougher for you. I agree. And, I mean, for those of you who are like, well, it's his lower body, it doesn't matter. Take a football and sit on the ground and see how far you can throw. If you do, yeah. if you cannot throw it more than five yards, you're just like everybody else. If you are not being able to use your hips and your feet when you're throwing, then you're, I mean, you're limited. Um, so, I mean, that limited a lot of our our game. And so, Jake, what did you think as far as the Louisville uh, football game goes? Well, I was kind of like Leroy when I when I came into the game. You know, first we had heard 
that Jawan Hess is going to be out, and everybody was like, "Oh, that's good." It's like, no, it, it's it's not that much better. Like, Lee Cunningham, and all. And honest to God, I think Lee Cunningham should probably be the starter. He's a he's a better athlete than Jawan Pass, and Jawan Pass can't actually pass that well, anyways. So you're not really losing a lot. So I wasn't super excited about that. I was like, okay, this is probably. I thought it was a two touchdown game, and I had said that I thought they were going to be this like 34-20. I, I thought that was going to be you know sort of the score that we, we would see. Well, you were pretty uh, close. Yeah, you know, three points off of, of the, the margin there. But then you get into the game, and granted, on their first drive, we couldn't really stop a whole... I mean, on the first drive, we stopped a little bit. But, you know, early on, we couldn't really stop them around the ball. Like, okay, it's just how it's going to go. But then Western goes and scores on their first possession, from their first play, like, just boom, Simon down the side, just gone. So, okay, 77-yard touchdown, we can maybe do this. And then it starts to get away from me. It's, okay, well, this is kind of how I expected. Blow us off the line on both sides of the ball. Can't get a run game going. So I'm like, okay, you know, this is this is how it's going to be, whatever. Then you knock Malik Cunningham out of the game. Backup comes in. You're going, oh, okay, this is something we can work with. And then as you watch that second half, they just could not claw back into that game. You had receivers dropping open passes. You had, you know, Duncan maybe missing, you know, some check downs. You've got a couple of real questionable play calls on Helton's part. Um, And and specifically, the questions that you're going to throw out there are the runs. Am am I correct? Yeah, and I, 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 it's like I, it's like I was telling you guys. I think, honest to God, what happened was they had a game plan. They were looking for certain things in the game plan. And when they got into a position where, like, the circumstances dictated what was on the play card, they went with the play card. Yeah. Uh, and and you know what? Nissan Stadium, like we always said, third, you know, third actual head coaching game. Like, I do get that missteps are going to happen, but you got to level criticism when it's there because I think it's rightfully so. And I think, honestly, um, I haven't seen much of the like, you know, traditional media, like what they. You know, if they've said anything to him about it or asked about the calls about it, I, I've been a little busy to kind of watch a lot of the stuff. Um, but I think it's a fair question. I do too. You know, to ask. Um, you know, let me start you about it. I mean, maybe they did really see something and Louisville just sniffed it out because if you guys watch, like that really roaming, kind of random appearing defense that they had um, really seemed to give the top spits and starts for a lot of the game. Um, my main disappointments will continue to be drop passes. Um, I'm, I know and Matt says, you know, as goes Lucky Jackson, as goes the team, that's probably right. Um, that drop touchdown, that bobbled, like, for sure, first down. Um, you, just, it's, you just can't make those mistakes when you're a senior leader. You just can't. I, I agree. Um, with your, I agree with your point thus far. Um, if it, it As a senior, and he's a fifth-year senior, I believe, and when he's a ball, an when do I know? I said he's an old man. Yeah, as a fifth year senior, senior though, if the ball hits you in the hands, you should be able to pull it in. Um, yeah, I, it just that's just part of it. You're a receiver; that's your job. Yeah. Um, so uh, the only thing I actually have to debate about is Louisville. Western got the ball first, punt. Louisville punt. Western punt. Then Louisville scored on the technically their second series. Um, and then Western answered back like two series later or whatever, and it was fourteen uh, seven. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. The basic, the meat of my problem is that second quarter. Um, there were some questionable calls running it on third down. Um, if it's third and two, I don't, ex- I don't, I don't disagree as much with that. But when you got third yeah. and nine, like we were looking at, you know, it's kind of like uh, I, I get they're okay. trying to open stuff up. And I don't know if it was an RPO they were running. You know, maybe maybe Duncan was supposed to pull those. I don't know. You know, I, I'm not in the huddle. I can't hear that. But, you know, it's just observation that I'm going off of. Um, so. It, it just seemed, it seemed that a lot of times when the play would break down that there was just, there was no backup plan. I mean, and, and I get it. Football's a fast sport. But, like, it just seemed to me that that when things broke down, like there was no answer or response to it at all. Yeah. Um, 
and, and I, I can will kind say, of, go ahead, Jake. No, no, you're good. But well, go I'm ahead. just gonna say, you know, I, I, you guys always do. I'm always all doing the gloom and beat their leg and all that stuff. But one thing I take away from from this game, and one thing that makes a Duncan injury even sadder than it already is, because you hate to see a guy get hurt. You hate to see a guy get sidelined when he's just starting to find his stride. Uh, and we do wish him all the best that he recovers quickly. And yes. You know, not out for very long because it just it just stinks. And you know he wants to be in there. Oh well, yeah. Uh, as he wants to compete, like he's because he. Like, when I saw because I was going back to what you said earlier, it's like maybe he was having some ankle or some shin, like some, like, lower body issues, and then in the Louisville game, he actually gets the proper, like, you know, cracked his foot injury. But you could see after that happened, like, at, towards the end of the game, like, he's still, I thought they were going to pull him. Yeah. The story was going to go in. But he stayed out there and, like, was completing throws and... Uh, he was still he being competitive, yeah. Yeah, he was out there, and you know he's in, I mean, it doesn't feel okay. Like, Mm-mm. if you've ever broken something and then had to use that something, that sucks a lot. Like, that's yes. too tough. But what was awesome in this game, and again, what also sucks about the injury, even more so, is that I do think that Stephen Duncan made a mental leap in this game that he needed to make, and it was not forcing it as much as he, as he has in the past. In the yeah. past, a lot of his picks we've seen have been throwing in terrible situations or being careless with the ball. And I know that he made some bad throws. I mean, it's going to happen. He, he did make some, you know, I wonder the covers he shouldn't have or whatever. But he didn't have any picks, and it seemed like he threw the ball away in a lot of situations yeah. when, you know, maybe in Central Arkansas, he would have tried to fit in that window knowing he can't. Yes. And so that's something that's like super debilitating. Like, I mean, even more. He's making steps, through. yeah. Yeah, but he's moving forward and he's getting better, and he's got what's possibly a season-ending injury. You're just like, man, it's, dude, just can't catch a break. Now I have a source who said he had surgery today, so I don't know, and they put a pin in. But I, again, I'm not sure on yeah. that. Um, yeah, that's what they they. I don't know about the like today thing, but they did say that they were going to put a pin in his foot, and you know they'll see when he gets back. So that tells me a. If if it's a pin, he may have broke uh, the long bone going down your your leg. He may have broke that on the outside, like he could have rolled his ankle that badly that it broke the tip of that bone off. Possibility could have broke the ends in the inner bone, uh, tibia or fibula. He could have broke the tips of those off, or he could have broke his foot. He could have actually broke his foot. Uh, one of the yeah, metatarsals. I think they said at least initially. You know, it's hard to say like before. Because, I mean, you've been on the team, Dad. You know how it is. Like, yeah. Doc looks at you pretty well, you, quick. Well, the big thing is, and that's what a lot of people are kind of like, well, a coach doesn't know. There's HIPAA laws, too. Yeah, you so, can like, You can only talk about what they consent you to talk about. Yes. Um, and, and college is much more restrictive than the, than the NFL is. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, and you don't necessarily know. And you got more decision makers involved. You've got coaches. You've got athletic directors. You know, you've got... I mean, these are adults that so can consent to their own stuff, but at the same time, like, what gets released to the media is, is, is different. So, initially, I know they said um, they thought they were going to put the pin in his foot, um, but, like you say, until there's an official press release and they actually like, go over what happened, and they will eventually, um, with everything, the dust kind of settles, um, and they get a starter pick, uh, they'll let everybody know, you know, hey, yeah. I got... Hand him a foot. It sucks. Yep. Uh, I feel bad. So, Leroy, where's your money at starter? Are you going with Story or are you going with somebody else? I, I'm fine with Story, at least for the next game. I'd like to see, especially, because Helton likes, likes to have the first 10, 15 plays straight up. Like, it's going to be the same each time. But I want to see him go through the progressions and really, really just Especially if it's just the start of the game, let him try to get out there, and if he sinks, and then just let him sink or swim. Because reality, I mean, they have to have something at at the helm there, and somebody that needs to say, "Okay, our leader is down. I have to take over, and this is going to be my team." And the guy that does that is the guy that's going to move into that position. You cannot be wishy washy at quarterback. That's not how those guys are designed. You know that. I know that. Yep. Quarterbacks have a swag. They have to have a swag. And hopefully Story is able to lead this team forward. And, and uh, it's got to be a next man up attitude. 
completely agree. Um, I think as much as I'd like to see Davis Shanley probably come in here, he's probably not going to. I imagine he'll be QB2, uh, and you'll have Story coming in at QB1. Um, and I'm sure they've probably got reps coming off with Story practicing with the first team, um, you know, just kind of, you know, and, and I mean, they may have that competition this week, you know, since it is a bye week to see who will start next week. Um, the only, the big thing I kind of took away from Louisville though, um, is why didn't we go to Simon more often? Do y'all notice Dude, that too? For real. Yeah. He had one reception and that kid is good. Um, basically saved us from a second or a fourth, third or fourth pick, who knows, against UCA. Um, and he only got one target for 77 yards. So, uh, yeah, the, touchdown. Yeah, the one again, touchdown. I wonder, I wonder if it's a mobility issue as well as not being able to get his throws off as accurate as what he wanted to. Could be. Yeah, you could be right. Uh, Jake, who do you think should start this week? You think story's it? I mean, I'm like you. I, I like known commodities. I watch David Shanley be an accurate and consistent, if not like an overpowered arm uh, type of quarterback. Uh, but I will say this, that I do not think that Coach Helton is dumb. I do not think that he, I don't know, mis-evaluated his offensive option. I think he has a game plan he wants to run, and he picks a guy that he thinks is going to run it the best. And if it's true that Story was right there, now I know the spring game he looked terrible, but, you know, it could have had a bad day. You never know. It's one, yeah. it's one outing. Could have been jet lag but, or something from flying from Arkansas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right from, from Arkansas. Uh, but if he says he's the guy and that's what he saw, then – He's probably right that he's the best option. Now, I do think it's interesting because this week, instead of having a clear, you know, as it was in the early season, it was Duncan's our starter, but Story's right there, and then, you know, Shanley, Thomas. Now, he said that the competition is kind of open, and it's like, you know, this is this is who we're, you know, we're going to let him compete. Da, 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 da. I think that's interesting. I don't necessarily believe it a whole lot. I think he's keeping the stuff close to the chest. We already know he likes to do that with his depth chart. Holy fire, his call. Um, so I, I honestly, I think it's probably story. Yeah. I honestly, God, unless he, unless there's you know something going on with him, we don't know. Yeah. Um, I honestly think it's him. If I had my druthers, because I have such low expectations for the season, anyways, and I'm not really super duper miffed if it's a terrible season, I'd honestly rather have Shanley get the reps because I think he is your future guy. Yeah. I think he's the one who steps up. Now, it'll be interesting. Yes. Because if because Stephen Duncan has only played in three games, very likely to get a medical red shirt if he's out for the entire season. But he's got, he could get another year of eligibility. Yes. And that's when you start talking about, okay, maybe you don't give Shannon, if that's what they think will happen, then maybe you don't give Shannon the reps. Maybe you just give it to Story for the year, get us through the year, back to Duncan next year, and you know Thomas or some other recruit is your quarterback in the future? I don't know, but it's it's gonna be it's gonna be story. It probably needs to be story. I just want to go out there and see some wins. To be honest with you, I just want to be happy. Honestly, going into conference play uh, before we got the news that he was hurt, I was suspecting that I actually was looking forward to conference play. Uh, full disclosure, because yeah. I mean, going against a Power Five team like Louisville um, and not being allowed to bring prostitutes to the game i mean it's whatever but um <laughs> going against them you know i was actually looking forward to it because i thought well these guys will be good you know this is a good outing for western they should be good yada 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 um and i'm actually kind of googling something to see well, i don't see him okay see what um okay so i had a question pop up and i was trying to answer it real quick what okay let me see if i can find him in here uh, Davis, or not Davis, Stephen Duncan has a brother who plays for Temple, Temple, but he's not on the roster. Maybe it's like a Temple, uh, cause that, cause I saw that picture where it said Temple yeah, and it did not look like Temple's colors. Yeah. So maybe it's like a high school that's called Temple. Touche. You could be right because I, they were like, well, is he got a twin brother? Cause they look so much alike. And I was like. They could. I don't they really, know. They really do. They really do look very similar. Yes. 
Okay, so, uh, do y'all have anything on the Louisville recap? Basically, we lost, guys, and it sucked. Yeah, I mean... It was a bad you know. game to watch. In that second quarter, I, of course, I had to write the recap for the towel rack, so as bad as I wanted to turn it off and just go screaming in the other room and cussing, I couldn't do that, so... Um, yeah, you don't want to scare the dogs. <laughs> uh, yeah, my these, wife would just think it's crazy. These losses are going to happen. I mean, yes. these losses are going to happen. As much as we hate it, we have a new coach in. We've had a couple years of rough seasons. But these losses are going to happen. It's it's how the group is able to adjust and adapt moving forward and taking those personal gains and personal victories and saying, all right, look, my personal matchup, I mean, yeah, we lost overall, but I was able to handle my defenseman. And if that, I mean, that's what they have to look for is their personal, the personal individual matchups and victories that they had. Sound, yeah, I agree. That's uh, that's an actual good way to look at it. I can completely get behind that. Um, the next big opponent they're going to play is UAB. Uh, and like I said, we've got this bye week this week, so we're not going to go as long uh, tonight, but we'll... Uh, we'll touch on that next week and talk about what to expect yeah. against uh, against UAB. Uh, but tonight, uh, the way I worded the question uh, was really crap, uh, so that's on me. <laughs> but um, what I um, was wanting to hear was, you know, your questions going into this uh, bye week, and I got a lot of uh, more rants than anything. So this week it's going to be called the rant bag, not the mail bag. Uh, Brad says we had to play this game without any mistakes and we had the big QB fumble and that's when things turned against us. The odds was against us with much faster and without a number of talented players. They had lots more four stars and upper three star players than us, but everything is over. Let's get ready and move on for our conference games and keep winning. Let's go tops. Yes. Uh, completely agree there, but, um, and it was like we said last week on the podcast, I think Jake was the one that talked about it, um, that you know this was a game where if we had little to no mistakes and Louisville kind of had their pee down the leg moments, we could win that game. Um, and that was completely true. Uh, and as far as the talent goes, I don't know. <sighs> For me, in, in college football, four and three stars aren't as important as they are in basketball. Like a three, like a four star guy can disappear off the face of the earth and work at Kroger, and you never know what happened to him. But you know, in basketball, if that happens, that's like a travesty or a Mitchell Robinson or whatever. Um, but um, let's see. Uh, Matt says definitely took issue with running the ball on third and ten in no man's land for no gain, then going for it. That whole sequence was weird. First time that I've felt uh, Helton misstepped a little bit. Also, didn't like running in third and long multiple times when you're desperate to get back in the game. Completely agree, Matt. Uh, it's really insightful and very rare. Um, anyway, moving on. <laughs> um, Leon Remington uh, asks, Why was Duncan still in the game when he was injured and having very little mobility? Excellent opportunity to insert a backup and gain some experience. Bro, you got me. What would you, what'd you say, Leroy? Quarterbacks will never quit. I mean that. I mean Duncan could have gone out there missing half of his leg, and he would have gone out there and tried to fight. You'd know darn well he was going up to Helton, being like, "No, nah, no, nah, I'm fine. I'm fine. I can play." And it, see, yeah. I agree with that. Um, I would think that the trainer would have stepped in and said, "You know, you know, are you having any issues? This, this, and this. We'll put some tape on it. You know, are you going to go? You can go. Okay. You know that kind of questioning." Um, so we'll, well see. And that's, and that's my concern moving forward with Duncan's injury is I, I love Western to death. I just hope that our trainers are able to go in there and really, really help him rehab and, and, and get back to the level that we know that he can play at. Yes, completely agree. Um, actually, there was a nice piece on uh, WBKO about our head athletic trainer, she is one of, I think, 10 female uh, football head athletic trainers uh, in the nation. So, I mean, hey, way to go, Tops. Um, and we got a guy from Britain. Uh, Steve Guy says, Greetings from Great Britain. I really enjoy the podcast. Do you feel having these marquee home games in Nashville is worthwhile? Um, yes and no. 
it would be awesome to be able to have these games at home. Ergo, Vandy versus Western, yada, yada, yada. Um, you know, Navy versus Western. Uh, but for a fan, it's kind of fun to go down, uh, kind of make a day of it, go down, have a meal at a nice restaurant in Nashville, go to the game. Um, the guys spend a night in a hotel room in Nashville, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, is it worthwhile? I don't know. I, I think it kind of wastes their money. What What do you think, Jake? So, I like it. <laughs> what, the, what did you just say? I, I like it. I thought you dropped an F-bomb, dude. Oh, no. <laughs> so, I like it. I was like, dude, what are uh, you doing over there? <laughs> dude, dude, uh, no, so I like it, but I kind of have a caveat to that. I don't like that this is the norm for scheduling Power 5 teams, like a home at their spot and then a neutral site. If I'm, if we're going to do this, if we're going to play regularly, I either want to get a one-off down there where it's neutral site for fun, or it's part of like a three-game series where you get a home and a home and a neutral site. Um, there's still a lot of little, I mean, I know there were a lot of Western fans there. There's also a lot of little fans in Nashville because again, they're regional schools. So for me, one-off's fine, or at least make it back. Yeah. Uh, Leroy, what do you think, buddy? These games, in my opinion, are more for the players than they are for the fans. And the reason I think that is these players get to go to these NFL sites. They get to go sit in the same locker room, same areas that the actual pros get to be in. I mean, this is, for some of these guys, this is as close to the NFL as they're ever going to get. And... I, I really think that these games mean a lot more to the players because they get to play under the lights. They get to play on the grand stage. They get, they get to, you know, take the same steps and step in the same places that other players have already played in. For the fans, maybe not so much. I mean, uh, I went and saw the Bears play the Buccaneers at Wembley Stadium a few uh, back in uh, the early, well, not even early, late 2000s, probably yes. even early 2010s. Uh, when I when I was when I was stationed in England, and in that experience, the fans get a whole lot more of it than the players do. But at the same time, like as fans, you know, why do we like those kind of games? Well, I mean, there's not really a significant reason why we like them, and that's why I, I mean, yeah, we'll go support them, and yeah, I mean, we get to go to Nissan Stadium and get to go to some other really really cool places, but. It does make you wonder in the back of your head, fine, I'm playing here, but is there something wrong with my house? Like, why won't you come to my house, you know? Yeah, it's kind of like that one friend who wouldn't spend the night at your house, but you had to go to his house, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. When you were a kid. Um, yep. As Okay, so when I was at Western working with football team, uh, that was during the years we played Kentucky, and that was the uh, Lexington, Nashville, you know, play back and forth. And it was really a neat experience, um, you know, going into the locker room and that kind of thing. Actually, Tennessee State used to play there. Uh, really? Yes. So, uh, another fun fact is they don't have hydrants inside the stadium. So, when we filled up those big carts that we have full of water and stuff, uh, we actually had to use those big jugs like you have at Walmart that go in the big water coolers. <laughs> Uh, oh, man. Yes, so those were a lot of fun. Um, yeah, so, I mean, it was a really good experience to go down there and see that kind of stuff because, I mean, it's a once-in-a-lifetime kind of thing. Um, and like you said, I agree, Leroy, a lot of these kids aren't going to get to go to the pros. I mean, I mean, if, for those of you doing the math, you know, how many countless high schools are across the country, and they probably have maybe 100 kids, and then you got to think you have 130 uh, fo- uh, college football teams, you know, bowl eligible football teams, um, and you know, that, say if they have seventy players on each team, you're looking at. Let me do the numbers because I have a calculator. Uh, say they got seventy, and then that's Earth. yeah, no, right? That's nine thousand one hundred players. Compare that to thirty two teams who have a fifty three man roster, and you're looking at sixteen hundred ninety six NFL players. That is a big drop. So a lot of kids aren't even going to get to go uh, play on Sunday, sadly. Uh, so for them to get to go play in Titan Stadium is an awesome opportunity. 
Uh, so the, the the odds the odds for a high school senior to play NCAA men's football is one in seventeen. For NCAA senior players to be drafted by an NFL team, one in fifty. So two oh percent. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Um, so nine nine in ten thousand or point zero nine percent of high school seniors will play in the NFL. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Um, uh, just. I mean, and I lived those numbers playing high school football, um, and even when I went to college, I decided I wasn't going to use my back to play. I was going to use my head and try and get through college, you know, working for the team like that. Uh, so, next rant uh, goes to Laura. Too many qu- mistakes, especially running up the middle on third downs. So, I think it's uh, universal. Everybody hates running on third down. Uh, and... Laura asks, how do, Laura asks, how do I get the podcast? So you can get the podcast many different ways. Uh, you can go on podbean.com. You can search Red Out that way. You can go on iTunes and search us that way. You can go on, I think it's Streaker. Isn't that the one we've... No, Stitcher. 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 Streaker's a different one. You don't want to go to that one. Um, you don't want to go to that one. No, that's, that's a dirty one. Um, so Stitcher. Uh, we're on iHeartRadio as well. Um, very many different avenues to listen to the podcast. Um, and we're on YouTube. Uh, you just turn on YouTube and just let it play in the background, uh, and you can listen. Yeah, we're also on uh, the website Hall About Sports. Yes, uh, and you can, can listen to us on archive, there. Archive podcast as well. Yeah, and he and he plays uh, different podcasts throughout the day, so you can listen to the different local podcasts talking about yeah, local, local sports. Podcasts from all over the state. Yes, so they're mm-hmm. all around Kentucky. Yeah, make sure to listen in because and support those guys. Uh, so, jump it over to Twitter real quick. Uh, Ross asks, why is Jared Rochdusher wrong about Kavaris Thomas starting? I got uh, this one. Go ahead, Jake. Because he's a fullback with a really strong arm. <laughs> uh, I agree. And that's what I told Jared is... At uh, least right now. This isn't Madden NFL 2K 20. So, you know, just... Uh, you can't just make your own player and expect him to be good. Um, I think Kavaris Thomas will be good in a few years, but um, I don't know if quarterback's going to be his position because, like I said before about diff- about Gage Walker, uh, players switch positions a lot. Uh, so he may go to tight end. He may go to fullback if we if he has a fullback in Helton's offense, um, or he could stay at quarterback and just be that f- crazy monster, which is amazing to watch. I won't lie. Uh, Leroy, what do you think? Why is Jared wrong about Kavaris Thomas? He still needs a lot of a lot of work. I mean, that's that's just. I mean, that's the the bottom line of it. And I mean, it's something that there's some football skills that can be taught, and there's others that can't. And he needs, from what I understand, and from the few sources that I have, is he still needs quite a bit of work, especially with his feet. Okay, I can see that. Um, big guys typically have. Uh... I guess slower footwork, um, but I think there is a lot of potential with Kavaris Thomas in the you oh, know, yeah, next couple of years. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Um, young guy. So Ryan Butler says, between the FIU win and the University of Louisville loss, uh, this team could win games against the remaining schedule, potentially any game if they could shore up the secondary issues. I truly believe this. Yeah, I completely agree with you, bud. Um and the thing is, too, I mean, they Louisville had uh, 205 passing yards and 210 rushing yards, so they were they were rocking out like what 51, uh, well, 49 percent passing, 51 rushing ish. Uh, so uh, that's, I mean, L- Louisville could do whatever they wanted to, and a lot of issues yep. with the passing game. Even the announcers called him out, Carson Palmer's brother. Which who is that guy? I'm just saying. Um, when I heard Palmer, I was like, wait, is he really into that Palmer? No, yeah, no, no, no. And the only reason I know that is because the dude name dropped, which was hilarious. My brother. So, yeah, he's like, my brother's him. getting a, uh, his jersey's being retired at blah, blah, blah. And I was like, dude, don't name drop. That's not cool. I wouldn't have known who you were otherwise, but. Uh, yeah. So he makes a great point, though. Our DBs, when they're dropping back in coverage, are flat-footed. And he's like, when Malik they're Cunningham... Getting they're getting beat. Yes, they got beat because they're flat-footed, and they're just they're not running with their receiver, so the receiver's got all that momentum going past them. 
And it was, I mean, it was just basically off to the races. And uh, I think Tutu Atwell was one of those that really just blew him out of the water. Yeah, 141 receiving well, yards on four catches. When you are constantly playing catch up as a as a deep back or as as a corner or even as a safety, if you are constantly playing catch up, you are going to be tired quick. And, yes, and you could tell by the end of that game they were definitely worn out. Yes, and a lot of that goes back to the offense too. Offenses are supposed to sustain drives and give the defense a break, but when the offense, I mean. If you look at the stats, Western didn't do so bad as far as time of possession. Uh, they were at like 28 minutes, but there for a while it just seemed like the defense was out there and out there and out there, and they just they couldn't really get a break. Every time I turned on the game, because I was working at the same time, every time I turned on the game they were on defense. <laughs> it exactly. Like. It really felt that way. It did. Um so, Tyler says, I didn't like running it on 3rd and 9 and 3rd and 12, but who do you see as the front runner in the QB race now? Uh, well, we technically just answered that. I think all of us agree with uh, Ty Story. Um, but, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, Ty Story is probably, you know, what, 75%? And then you're going to, I would give Shanley 20%, and then probably Kavaris the other 5 um, yeah, it's his, it's his position to lose. Exactly. Uh, I think I think Ty Story's got the possibility. And actually, I will discuss something we talked about kind of in the group chat. Um, if Western came out with a wildcat formation, who would you like to see as the quote quarterback? Jake, I'll let you take it first. I mean, I agree with you. It's it's a speedster. It's Gage Walker. Like, see, I was thinking Gage, or I was thinking Garland Lafrance. The only thing that yeah. makes me iffy on Garland is uh, he's a little smaller, which is fine. But having Gage Walker back there as a pitch man, so and having Lafrance back there as the, as the actual pitch man and uh, Gage as the actual pit, the quarterback would actually be a really good play, I think, uh, for a yeah, goal line probably. stance. So uh, Tyson, take notes, buddy. Um, yeah. <laughs> Sounds like uh, Leroy's watching Springer. Um, no, it's, it's, I got it. <laughs> no. I know, four, right? You have four kids. You have a very active house. My God, um, man. Oh, yeah. Have yeah. you figured out what causes that yet? <laughs> no, we're working on <laughs> Oh, okay, okay. Uh, so, um, Leroy, who do you think would be a good uh, Wildcat quarterback? I, I'm all right with most of the guys we have. My concern with Wildcat is... We've seen Western try to run the Wildcat before. Granted, in very small spurts, but it just seems like every time they ran the Wildcat in the past, the ball was fumbled or they, they didn't know what they were doing or it, it just blew up in their face. So I don't care who you have at quarterback, Mr. Helton, as long as you <laughs> work on it in practice and get it to a point where they can do that in their sleep because th those plays are so risky as far as if you make – it's like a screen pass, right? Yeah. You make a mistake that if, you, if it's successful, guess what? You are going to score an easy six points. But if it's not, not successful – you're looking at second or third and a mile. Yeah, uh, or if you're lucky enough, if you're lucky enough to recover the football. I was gonna. I was just about to say, or with the screen pass, you could see a nice pick six going the other way, and those are immediate uh, knock the wind out of your sails moments. Uh, exactly. So we're gonna do a, like a, a new segment here. Um, you know your old win. Uh, these are things either we do or we think uh, that older people do. Uh, so my first one, uh, is eating sweet potatoes. I do this, uh, when I was younger, I thought sweet potatoes were disgusting and it, I'd never wanted to eat one. And now that I've gotten older, I think sweet potatoes are amazing. So guilty, um, diet drinks, drinking diet drinks, I think is an old thing too. And I do that. Definitely. Um, I'm doing that literally right now. There you go. Uh, complaining about new music. I think that's a new thing. Uh, not a new thing, but it's an old person thing. Uh, whenever there is a new band or a new genre of music that comes out for the older people to say, well, what was wrong with the older stuff? What was wrong with that? What was... And you're like... I do that uh. literally every day. <laughs> and uh, my uh, final form, Super Saiyan 4, whatever you want to call it, 
is the white New Balance shoes. I have not gotten to that level oh, yet. Oh, no. <laughs> Are you there, Leroy? <laughs> yeah, oh, no. No, I'm not. I don't have my white shoes. I'm rocking... I'm rocking Star Wars, uh, Star Wars shoes right now. Oh, that's so all good. I'm still good. Okay, I was gonna say if you're walking, if you're rocking them like Sam is, then that's fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, Sam Gormley, I think, wears those, so it's fine. Oh, uh, yes. That was yes. <laughs> so Leroy, how about you go next? What is your, you know, your old win? Uh, so this is gonna sound really, really dorky, but uh, when I was a kid, you're among friends. <laughs> yes, don't worry. When I was, when I was a kid, my, my dad had a ton of wood that was out in his garage. Never used it, never touched it. Still to this day, don't understand why he had it. One of my buddies had a bunch of wood, and he was like, Leroy, you want this? And I'm like, oh, sure, yeah. Now I have wood. And I don't, <laughs> I don't, know, why, and I don't know what I'm going to use it for. Well, I mean, you've got four kids. Of course you do, but yeah. Um, right, yeah, that's how that happens. <laughs> uh, you got any others, buddy? No, that's it. I got to take fun. off, actually, guys. So, hey, yeah, uh, it yeah, was yeah. Really, really, it was really, really good talking to you, and uh, as always, go Tops. Hey, go Tops. Th- nice thanks time. for joining us, Leroy. Uh, but, yeah, Jake, what do you have on your, you know, your old win? Well, as I've already said, I, I do I do two of those things, like, all the time. Like, I, drink <laughs> that, I drink that sodas and, you know, complain about every, every day I listen to country music, I'm like, what in that poor nation is this crap? Yeah, exactly. Like, I agree. What happened to King George? Uh, but now for me, it's just um, it's when you just there's a there's a fundamental shift in how you live your life. So like, you okay. know you're old when you don't know what one a.m. looks like intentionally anymore. <laughs> so like, yes. I, I don't know. I, I don't know what one a.m. looks like unless my child is waking up. You know, because you pooped your pants or something like that's that's how I know what one AM looks like. And yes, it's not, it's not pleasant anymore. Uh, another thing, like just talking about the wedding, they had an open bar, so I was like, you know what? Let's yeah, this will be good. And you know, it didn't go crazy. We didn't even do anything stupid. But, you know, that's great. You know, good. You know, whatever. And you're like, man, that next day driving home. Yeah, it's rough, isn't I it? I'm tired. My <laughs> stomach hurts. Like, I need some Pepto Bismol. Yes. Like. That's how, you know, used to you could do that and then, like, get up and drive 14 hours and, like, not care and stop off and get Taco yes. Bell and it not phase you. And now it's like, mm, man, I don't, I don't know. So, um, so for me, it's all the physical stuff, like the yes. recouping. You just, your, your life just takes a, a turn. Yes, yes. Um, and I don't know about you, but, like, the, uh, the amount that you can consume, it's it decreases a lot, I feel like. Like you, oh, dude, for like sure. the amount you could consume when you were in college, and the amount you can consume now is completely two different things. Oh yeah, oh without without question. And it seems uh, like if you tried to go back to college and do that right now, you would die. I would die. Yes, I would, die. I would be dead. <laughs> have to, I had to set up arrangements with y'all. I would. Yes, be yes. Uh, hashtag the Undertaker. Um, so That's right. Um, and I think another thing, just kind of jumping on board real quick, is um. You don't make plans, like 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 you know you're old when you don't make plans. Like when you were younger, you'd be like, "Hey man, let's go out later and do this and do this and do this," and you know you'll have somebody call and be like, "Hey man, are you doing anything?" You'd be like, "Yes," and then you literally go home and do nothing. I think that's that's oh, yeah. that's uh, me for sure because I'm just like, no, oh, I don't want to do anything. Yeah, I have, <laughs> you know, and, and and I'm pretty outgoing guy, you know earlier in life, you know, yeah. everything, all that fun stuff. Love to go out, love just go hang out and do crap. I I told my wife the other day, I was like, you know what I'm sick of? She's like, what? I was like, doing stuff. <laughs> I was like, I just don't want to do, all I do is stuff. I don't want to do stuff anymore. Can we just stop doing stuff? Exactly. What do you mean? I was like, I just want on a Friday afternoon to come home, eat supper, and then just Take care of my business. On exactly. And just, yes. and just not not go anywhere, not see anybody, not go out. Yep. And don't even start. How do you do Thursday? Yep. How, how do people do Thursday? <laughs> I barely understood that when I was in college. Now when I hear like, oh yeah, we're going to go out on Thursday. We're going to. Are you they, kind of insane? Yeah, they didn't do anything on Friday evidently. Yeah, well, yeah, that's that's true too. I was just like, man, sakes. Like, how are you guys. Yeah. 
like handling existence doing that. Like, I just don't, you know, <laughs> like, I got house shoes. That's how old I am, man. Oh, my gosh. I'm like Mr. Rogers. I come home and change and put on house shoes. I've got Crocs. My Crocs are my, I, those are my favorite thing. When I get home, shoes. when I get home, I, I leave my socks on. Um, and I, if I have to go outside to do something, the Crocs go on. And I just go and do whatever I've got to do outside, and I do not put shoes back on until I actually like leave the house to go do something. Um, hey, just remember they don't have good traction. Be careful. And no, 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 they do, but you have to put them in four wheel. You got to flip that little strap back, and you'll be set. <laughs> That's four wheel drive in Crocs, buddy. Lock it down. <laughs> Lock it down. Uh, so uh, that's all I've got. Do you have anything else, buddy? Nah, man, that's all I've got. Let's yep. hang it up on a short bye week. I know, right? Uh, we're doing a pretty quick show tonight. We're only at an hour right yeah. now. So, yeah, um, quick for us. So, guys, always uh, remember to like, share, subscribe. Uh, follow us on all our social media, Twitter and Facebook. Um, and if you want to ask us questions, you can DM us on Facebook or Twitter. Uh, we'll be glad to answer. And we love talking to our fans and listeners. And uh, as always, guys, go Tops. Go Tops.